Yeah. No, we, normally we have to put people into uh, into uh, mute. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Erev Tov, everyone. <laughs> Paro is of the opinion that uh, he finally will win here. Kisogar Aleya Mamidbor. Somehow the desert has enveloped them. According to the Mephorshim, the Jewish people went in many different directions. Uh, the Pesach says, Lo nocham Elohim, Derech Eretz Plishtim. The main road from Egypt, Alexandria, the Suez, to the land of Israel is the coastal road. El Arish, up towards Gaza. That's their Heretz Plishtim. That was an ancient caravan road that existed from the beginning of commerce in the Middle East. And uh, later on, that became uh, the Via Maris of the Romans, the road of the sea, was always one of the main thoroughfares of trade and commerce and of traffic between Egypt and between uh, the other parts of the Middle East. The Rabboni Shalom didn't take them that way. Why? So Pulsik says it's a strange Pulsik. It's going to be a war. And then if they have an easy road, then they'll go back to Egypt. So in order to prevent them from going back to Egypt, we're going to take them through a trackless Sinai desert that doesn't have roads, that will require all sorts of miracles, the Amudesh and the Amudanon, so that they won't be afraid they won't not they won't have the possibility of going back to Egypt. So one could say, the Mephorshim point out, so then make it that there won't be a war. There won't be a war, so then they go straight on the road. The Mephorshim say that that obviously. The Rabboni Shalom is teaching us a lesson that there's always a struggle. That's never going to be, that there's never going to be any opposition. It's always going to be that somehow a war will occur. There'll be an opportunity to go back to Egypt. So, According to the Ramban and others, all sorts of different maps have been developed as to the journey of the Jewish people from Pisong and Ramses into the desert. Where did they cross? What is Yamsuf? Where is Yamsuf? I remember that uh, small child, uh, I don't know, maybe nine, 10 years old. Uh, so uh, somebody from Shul asked him, uh, do you know where Yamsuf is? He said, yes, it's a hotel in Eilat. <laughs> where is Yamsuf? So, uh, 
at the head of the Nile before it uh, runs into the Mediterranean, splits into a number of different uh, like tributaries. So some say that's Yamsuf. One thing's for sure, what we call the Red Sea is not Yamsuf because that's all the way on the other side of the uh, Sinai Peninsula. It's between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. So we don't know exactly what happened here. We don't know uh, where they got lost, where the trackless desert overtook them, but they were somehow in a situation that they were back to the sea and that they had no place to escape. They saw Mitzrayim, Nosea, each the Egyptian army stands at their rear. Now the Egyptian army had the Sheish Meos, Rechev, Bochur, 600 chariots. The chariots in the ancient world were the tanks, the armored uh, vehicles, Jewish people didn't have any of that. And even though it says Vachamushi Malubna Israel Maris Mitzrayim, that the Jewish people came out with arms, but their arms were they were not an organized army. They were a rabble to face the great Egyptian army. So Chazal say, famous Medrish. You know, our ideas of, uh, of the Chumash are always tainted by the fact that uh, we once saw a comic book or we once uh, saw a movie, God forbid, or something, you know, so we, uh, that's, that's the impression that we have, but that certainly is not the fact that's not what occurred. So what should they do? So Chazal say, Arbo uh, Kito Tavayam. The Jewish people were divided into four sections, meaning there were four dominant options, opinions, what to do. So one opinion was that you should make war with the Egyptians, we'll do, you know. We have arms, uh, we'll, whatever happens, happens, right? In other words, we're not going back to Egypt. Better that we should die in the desert in the war than to go back and be slaves. That's one idea. And that's an idea that all of us can identify with. There's a second group that says we should pray. Make a, a fast day, we'll have a young tanit, we'll pray. That's also a good idea. Because since they came out of Egypt miraculously, they came out only Biyad Hashem, so it's Biyad Hashem to save them too. So let's pray that Hashem should save us. There were a third group that said, let's go back to Egypt. You know, this was a, a failed experiment. We're not ready to be a free people. The Egyptians are not ready to let go of us. They will always pursue us and haunt us. So, uh, Let's go back to Egypt. Chazal point out that that was a very prevalent idea. And we see that idea repeated throughout the Midbar. Wherever there was a crisis, there always was an element that said, go back to Egypt. The, the, uh, the past is always a more comfortable place than the uncertain future. There we knew what to do. 
And there was a fourth group that simply says, let's make noise. Maybe we'll frighten them off. We don't have the ability to fight them. We don't want to go back to Egypt. But we'll make a lot of noise. Maybe they'll uh, get confused and go away. Today, that's called public relations. It's how governments work, make a lot of noise. Doesn't solve the crisis, but at least, you know, we're making noise. So the Mephorshim point out that the Medrash really, it's really part of the Medrash, that the Rabboni Shalom said to Moshe, reject all of these ideas. Now is not a time for prayer. It's not a time. Immoral Bnei Yisrael be his soul. Let them go into the sea. The sea will split for them. The tribe will be destroyed. But they have to do something first. The sea will not split until they go in. The famous medrash regarding Nachshon ben Aminadav, that uh, he was the Shevet Yehuda. He was the one that jumped into the sea. And when he jumped into the sea and the waters came to his neck, then it split. And that's the idea that we have always, that Nisim always happen after we do something. We're the catalyst to create the Nisim. Nisim don't happen in a passive state. We do what we can. That's how Moshe was saved, right? She, uh, the daughter of Paro reached out with her arm. So her arm was not long enough to reach where the baby's crib was in the Nile. But when she reached out with her arm as far as she could, then the nest happened that the crib came close and she was able to save it. Because I'll say the Jewish people adopted the ideas of Yaakov Avinu. When he met Esau, that's the first major crisis. Esau, his Arba Meo Shimo, he's got an army with him. He's, he's Esau, you know, he's got the, he's the black belt champion. So let Dor and let Philo the Melchoma. Yaakov Vinu has strategies to deal with it. One of the strategies is to pray. So the Mephorshim say, if he's praying, what does he need the other two strategies for? Your man, Yaakov Avinu, right? Sula Mutsav Arza, Rosh Magia Shemaima, Vine Hashem Nitzavolov. So if he prays, it's enough. The answer is not enough. He has to be prepared to do something. And what gets him out of it is Dorum, not prayer. He's able to buy a sub off. So the Amsuf is a miracle because the actions of the Jewish people uh, were the ones that caused the miracle to occur. Had the Jewish people remained passive and not so not jumped into the ocean, and then the sea would not have split. And uh, this is a lesson Lido wrote, is that even though we certainly rely upon heaven, that without heaven we are powerless, Nevertheless, it's up to us to do something. And that's in every area of life. I heard from a great Rosh Yeshiva. Uh, really, it's... Uh, 
it's almost 60 years ago. So I asked him then, because the uh, situation looked to be very bleak as far as uh, the establishment of yeshiva or the revival of Torah learning in the United States, or at least uh, in Chicago, where I was then. I, I had seen the whole, uh, the whole thing fall apart. The neighborhood went, uh, everything went. So I said to him, you know, in, in Yiddish, what's going to be? How are we going to get out of this? So he said, I remember the words exactly. He says, was wird sein, wird sein gut. It's going to be good. Over freer Duffman Kai in the mayor. But first, you have to be willing to chew dust. You have to do yours. You'll do yours, it'll be good. You'll undertake to do something, so then it'll be good. Sit back and say, you know, God will help. God certainly will help, but that's not a formula for success. It's not what the Torah wanted from us. Daberel B'nai Yisrael soul, God said to Moshe, don't make noise, don't make, don't, go ahead, do something, go into the sea. If you do that, you'll uh, witness uh, miracles that you ever imagined. You'll mit, mit, will witness the fact that the Egyptian menace will completely disappear. Never gonna happen again. You never have to worry about this again, but that it is ultimately up to you. That is really a very, very powerful idea. And one that has to be inculcated within us always that what we do is what occasions and enacts and causes the miracles to occur that the Rabboni Shalom will always help us with and will always save us from our enemies. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi Omer Rotzakorish Borhu Lazakos is Israel. Thank you.